audiences. I just saw the expanded bigger budget, uh, the Toxic Avenger musical in Houston, and David Bryan, Joe DiPietro, they were, we were all there. And on opening night, about half the audience were fans, trauma fans, and half the audience were kind of the typical uh, uh, Broadway type uh, subscription. Constantine. It was, yeah, Constantine Got from. Uh, Rulis from American Idol, is it? Constantine from American yeah, Idol, who stars Rock of Ages, right. Yep, yep, yep. And, uh, and both audiences seem to like it a lot. So, uh, the Proctor the, the, pays Peter to actually go to these yeah. shows. My <laughs> job sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and did you like, it's, tell me honestly, did you like the uh, Toxic Avenger musical? I went to, uh, I, we, we go to Broadway right yeah, here to see some, oh, I don't need it. Hi, do I need a mic? Oh, I uh, yeah. I fucking love Toxic Avenger the musical. <laughs> <laughs> That has nothing to do with what happened in the men's room a little while ago. <laughs> yes, sir. Question. You thought you did uh, a couple animes and uh, and it, like like pretty much cartoons and different uh, media of that sort has been very popular nowadays with Adult Swim and everything. Have you ever thought about doing anything else with that type of? Outlet? The gentleman asked about us uh, trauma doing animes. We really don't. It's not our business. Well, like uh, animated stuff. Right? Yeah, it's animated stuff. It's uh, we don't. It, uh, the Toxic Crusaders, I wrote, and the trauma team wrote some of them, but we did not uh, finance them, or, you know, I, uh, my business is to make movies that nobody shows up for. Uh, <laughs> that was apparent. We just, I don't, I still to this day do not know how uh, the Toxic Avenger movie was uh, <laughs> chosen to be a children's cartoon show. And there's some very, some very interesting things occurred when the grandmothers would go to the video store to bring home the toxic oh my God. <laughs> cartoon show, and uh, and in fact, it brought home the uh, Toxic Avenger video cassette box, which had this sort of a cartoony cover. Uh, we got some very lovely mail. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. <laughs> so it's not really our business, cartoons, but uh, you know, we're we're very happy if uh, if Adult Swim and in fact, oddly enough, no, actually, you know, Sprout. There's an NBC uh, network called Sprout, which is aimed at five-year-olds. Apparently, they just contacted us to pitch them uh, the tox a new Toxic Crusaders show. <laughs> and uh, at Troma, our uh, our mentality is about five years old, so I, you never know. It might work. I got a question over here. I got there. What's that? They even need sofa. I got there. Yeah, yeah. Don't uh, bend over and pick up the sofa, by the way. Yes, sir. Hey. Oh. Hey. Oh. Helmets. Uh, boy, hey, how's it going? Help me out. <laughs> nice try. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, with Poultry Geist, you took like a new um, way of doing things with that because I, if I remember correctly, with Poultry Geist, you worked with an entirely volunteer crew. No one was really hired or paid to do it. Well, I think what was unusual for us with Poultry Geist is that it was in focus. That was one thing. <laughs> that was unusual, yes. Bravo for that, too. Bravo. I think they should give you a technical award for that. This year. Anyway, what was the question? I'm sorry. Uh, well, the question is, um, what's the likelihood you might want to do that again? I, I remember watching the behind-the-scenes stuff, and it seemed like... Uh, the, the production came together great, but it seemed like it was really grueling for you and for the entire crew. Do you think you'd ever try something like that again? Or? Well, the gentleman is referring to the fact that Poultry Guys Night of the Chicken Dead had a group from all over the world that was attracted to make the movie through the internet. That's what's different. Uh, we've never really uh, paid people, or if we do pay them very much, and always from, from 1974 on, we've never had really much money to pay people. So that's always been the case, and um, I don't get any money for directing these movies unless the movie makes uh, makes a profit, which has not happened in many a moon. Uh, Michael Hers and I get uh, get nothing. Poultry Guys, my best film, uh, has returned nothing, and uh, my wife's uh, I put most I put my wife's retirement money in that one. We couldn't ask investors to invest, but um, people did come. For, uh, I told her she was investing in uh, GI Joe Part Two. So. <laughs> In the vault, in the vault. Um, she uh, is not here because she's ill, otherwise she would love to be here. Um, now, uh, what was, this? so I, th I think we've always been, uh, you know, running on fumes. The, uh, but on Poultry Guys, we had the most uh, devoted cast and crew we've ever had. People came from Japan, from Australia, California. Um, they all came to Buffalo, New York, uh, and from England, from Germany, France. It was pretty much a, uh, a Tower of Babel, actually. 
But they all were totally devoted to the making of the film and the documentary on poultry guys. Poultry in Motion is, is terrific because it shows you it shows you how difficult it is to make a trauma movie with thousands of people and mixing all the genres and in the case of poultry guys singing and dancing chicken indian zombies and all that kind of stuff uh it shows you how difficult uh, and, and it's unvarnished truth uh, truth is stranger than chicken and you will see that if you if you uh, check out the poultry guys double disc dvd you will also see what an incredible asshole i am on this set but it's all about getting a good movie getting something that everyone can be proud of. And in order to work on a trauma movie, you have to sleep on the floor and eat cheese sandwiches three times a day and learn how to defecate in a paper bag. Have you, uh, after you learned how to defecate in a paper bag? You're probably learning it tonight. Probably. 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 My drawing probably caused it to happen uh, without the paper bag. That's right. Probably. But we say, I apologize. Yeah. Got I'm a sorry. question over here on the if side. If I do her both, just shut me up and yell. Well, first off, great Turn job. Turn on your cell phones. Yeah. Great job picking up the tape for Troll The tape, yes. Yeah. Very good movie. Watch. Omega are thrilled for that. Watch for the tape. That is an amazing, amazing movie. It's great. Well, take the record. Question, <laughs> you see a film person, like celluloid like film. How do you think you're going to do for uh, transition over to digital? I'm assuming the next uh, documentary film is going to be out digital. Well, we have produced uh, Father's Day, which is the movie uh, we've, we're starting to play. February 10th, it will open in New York City at the Sunshine. That was shot digitally. I, uh, I did not direct it, so it's a good movie. But it's, uh, <laughs> the next film I do will be digital. What's that? Is that a sequel to Mother's Day? It has nothing to do with Mother's Day, but I met the guys who directed it on the set of the remake of Mother's Day. Quite yes. uh, interesting. No, Father's Day was going to be fun for the fans is that Father's Day, I think people will think it's, you know, done to make a fast buck on the back of Mother's Day uh, and Mother's Day Remake, but in fact it's about priests and has absolutely nothing to do, so I think it's kind of cool. Anyway, uh, Father's Day is really good. It's really good. It looks great. It was shot on digital. And until recently, I would have stayed with, uh, with uh, the thing with sprocket holes. Uh, I can't remember what they call it, but it's so yesterday. But, um, but uh, the digital format has gotten so good, the digital cameras and all that stuff, and it looks so good that I will, for my next uh, uh, film, I'll switch to the digital uh, thing. Gentlemen with the glasses over here. Uh, what do you have in those glasses? Any vodka down there? <laughs> oh, those glasses. Oh, goddamn. Um, the next thing, how much did that cost? Huh? How much did Toxic Avenger, Avenger cost in nineteen? The original Toxic Avenger cost uh, uh, about almost 500000 U.S. dollars. In 1983, yeah. and the the uh, the uh, poultry guys, the movie we made in 2008 or whenever, uh, cost less dollars. Which means that with inflation, poultry guys also in 35 millimeter cost probably 20 percent of what Toxic Avenger cost, and it's a bigger movie. And uh, there was the reason is that the fans gave us so much support on the set with their uh, volunteering and working for almost nothing. Here in the middle. Sorry, what's that? It cost more in the beginning. How did you convince? Was it just the material? Like people got excited just about like the script? Well, back in the 1970s, 80s, uh, there was something called competition, where an independent movie could actually get into movie theaters, get onto cable television, and uh, get into video stores, and one could make a profit. So I could tell people, hey, if you invest in uh, Tromeo and Juliet, the worst that will happen to you is you'll you'll break even, and maybe make a small profit. Uh, in most cases, our movies made quite a bit of money. But uh, because of Reagan, the consent decree of 1948 was uh, thrown out the window and the theaters were uh, permitted to be owned and controlled by uh, the conglomerates. And then uh, during Clinton's watch, the financial syndication rule, which, required, which prevented vertical integration of the television into the studio world, uh, that was done away with. So as a result of that, um, they, the uh, networks do not have to run uh, truly independent content, nor does HBO. Nor, they can own all their content. So that uh, was a death knell for uh, profit. So when poultry guys came along, I could not tell investors, hey, you, you should invest in this because you'll get a profit. Because I, I had to tell them you will not get a profit, but you can uh, be a patron of, of the farts. I mean the arts. <laughs> and uh, so my wife and I put up about 80% of the budget of poultry guys, and we have gotten back about 4% of our investment, even though it's my best film by far.
and the reviews from New York Times and, and you know serious critics have been really good. But you know we we you know Cannibal the Musical, which you're going to see Trey Parker and Matt Stone's movie. These guys made at South Park. Cannibal the Musical and Citizen Toxie, the Toxic Adventure Part Four. Each one has sold. I think. Citizen Toxic may have sold more, but hundreds of thousands of videos and DVDs, neither of them have, have ever been on the television, on any, or on cable, any kind of crappy, not even crappy cinemas. Whereas the first Toxic Avenger, which originally no theater would play, and when Troma was unknown, because it was a good film, it got on HBO, it got on Showtime, it got on about 30 different uh, cable systems, plus a uh, pant load of uh, video stores. And um, the, the, the industry has become totally under the thumb of, these, uh, of this cartel, so that's the difference. Who else got? Uh, in the middle. Um, what's, what's your favorite movie you made? The favorite film that I have directed, uh, at Poultry Guys, Night of the Chicken Dinner. I think that's uh, the, really the most uh, risk-taking, and it's a musical, too. And by the way, I don't know whether you've noticed this, but I'm not the only gay director who's making musicals these days. <laughs> oh, I mean a, a gay married director. Um, the Glee, right? I mean, the musicals are hot now, um, and Poultry Guys preceded all this. Uh, uh, there's something being advertised, and I went to it last night, the uh, premiere uh, called Smash, and uh, it's, it's, a, they're, they're, it's going to open, uh, they're going to run it right after the Super Bowl on, uh, on NBC, and uh, musicals are hot again. So, uh, Troma, once again, uh, new movies of the future. Way over here on the side. Yes. Oh, uh, well. You like uh, the prize? Get your hands up. <laughs> uh, well, I uh, had a. Um, would you be able to tell us anything about the uh, Toxic Avenger for? Uh, uh, it says there's a remake for 2013. Uh, Twitter. See, that's interesting. Um, the Twitter questions. Uh, uh, Toxy has been signed by Akiva Goldsman, who got an Oscar for A Beautiful Mind. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, made the best movie ever made, Robin and Batman, Batman and Robin. <laughs> and uh, they're planning a tentpole movie. They've uh, sent the, they announced it in Variety and Hollywood Reporter, and supposedly a hundred million bucks and uh, blah blah blah. I, you know, you never know. You don't know. It, it's like the Toxic Adventure musical. It, they 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 put a lot of money into it. They opened in Houston. They they hope they'll get it to Broadway. I, I you know again, it's not. I'm affiliated with it, but I'm not uh, really. In, involved in it, but I do know we've gotten a few checks, so it seems like the remake is pretty serious, and uh, you know, hope for the best. And remakes don't have to be bad. You know, there are good remakes. You don't go to movie jail for making a good uh, remake. Local Even, local filmmaker John Russell Crane. Thank wow, you. John Russell Crane. Thank you, Nice. Uh, first of all, uh, Lloyd, I want to thank you first of all for performing uh, Trauma Fest where film festivals, where local filmmakers... Draw and dance. Yeah, right, right, where people can see, uh, can submit for three for what you're doing. I think that's an incredible thing that you do. Uh, what is your opinion on not being able to get into uh, theaters and not and now that the DVD store, the DVD, you know, is dead? What do you think can happen? Is there any future? Uh, for distribution of independent entertainment. Well, that's why I wrote uh, Sell Your Own Damn Movie, and we're working on a DVD box set. Um, the, what's great is that, for the first time, cinema has become democratized. The making of movies, anyone can do it. These wonderful little cameras that you can shove in your pocket for Best Buy and walk out with, hopefully, without paying. <laughs> but they're great. They're broadcast quality. I mean, people are making amazing movies for under $10,000. Really, really good movies. The, the, the conundrum is that you can't live off your art because of the uh, cartel, the monopoly. You can't penetrate the hymen of the mainstream. And if and, when, if and when you do penetrate the hymen of the mainstream, you're the one who gets fucked. So it's a very, very difficult situation. But you can have a, a decent job. You don't have to kiss ass in Hollywood. You can, you can be a teacher or a nurse or, or whatever. And, and make a movie once a year. You don't need a lot. You could be an artist without having to play the Hollywood game. That's what you do. And really, that's good enough for me. Brian Hipster Hat. Um, well, first I want to say, first of all, I want to say that Toxic Man is my all-time favorite movie. <laughs> my wife asked me, does any plans for like a Blu-ray release of all the movies? 
The Blu-rays, the gentleman has asked about the Blu-rays. We have released uh, uh, two of several of them, including Poultry Guys outside, with Romeo and Juliet in Newcomb High. The Toxic Avenger Blu-ray we are working on, the next one up will be Mother's Day the Blu-ray, uh, the original Mother's Day. It's going to be really, really good. Uh, the problem with Blu-ray is that we lose money on every single one of them, and uh, because uh, we can't get into any stores and uh, our fans are not terribly well to do and uh, nobody knows about them and uh, the media ignores us. So every time we do it, we lose. In fact, we lose on everything. But the Blu-rays are quite expensive to make for us. So uh, we're doing them slowly and whenever we have a little dough, we do it. And with Toxie, because it's a, a, a famous movie, um, we are um, going, it's, it, you know, there's so many people we have to try to find from back in 1983 and all that kind of stuff. But the good news about the Toxic Avenger is being, you know, Troma's slogan is movies of the future. We have heard about a new, brand new technology. It's called VHS, and uh, <laughs> we, we are in the process of uh, creating and releasing a limited edition VHS of the Toxic Avenger. It'll be a while, but we're slowly putting that together because our fans want it. Female. Yay. Uh, very good question. Um, uh, people, uh, fans, have, Poultry Geist is a very much a fan-driven uh, uh, production. Um, I think the best thing is I'm on Twitter, at Lloyd Kaufman uh, on Twitter, and I give news there of what Troma is doing. That feeds onto my Facebook and onto the fan site, uh, LloydKaufman.com. So if you keep an eye on those, um, no problem. And if you're, you're aggressive, and really, it is a very serious matter. and. Uh, uh, so it's really hard work. People think when we're making a movie, it's kind of a party, and uh, boy, is it not! It is so serious, it's unbelievable. And, and what you need to do is watch the uh, the documentary, Poultry in Motion, and uh, see what it's like to be doing it because it's 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 a really great life experience. I mean, people, two couples got married who met on the set of Poultry Guys, and. But on the other hand, there was crying, there were fist fights, there were, I mean, it's all on the DVD, uh, on, the, on the documentary, the, the second disc. But uh, not just our fans are involved with the Poultry Geist and the making of trauma movies, but as Paul will tell you, not just our fans, but uh, our air conditioners, too. <laughs> okay, we got time for three more quick questions. Right over a lot of people are leaving, lots of people are leaving. They're coming back. We forgot. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> but then, Sorry, what's going on? If anyone wants to leave, don't, don't let the uh, embarrass you. Um, you had mentioned uh, the remakes of the Toxic Manager, Mother's Day, and you were talking about the sequels. For yeah, they want to remake Nukem High, Class of Nukem High, and Poultry Guys, and uh, 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 Kabuki Man, we've got an offer. That was going to be my question. Was there any chance of a, a second Kabuki Man or a remake of Kabuki Man? Regarding uh, a sequel to Kabuki Man, uh, and thank you very much for uh, applauding Kabuki Man, uh, sometimes stars cannot handle fame. <laughs> Toxie is very cool. Toxie, uh, uh, you know, he's straight arrow, he's true to his, his uh, significant other and supports his mother. Sergeant Kabuki Man, when he became famous, became a drunkard and took a lot of drugs and, and uh, you know, became sort of the Charlie Sheen of Tromaville. <laughs> so he, uh, it's going to be a while before he's got his act together for a sequel. But he is, uh, if you see Citizen Toxie, the Toxic Avenger Part 4 is a big part there. He appears in and out, he's getting cameos. Uh, and um, um, in Toxie 5, he's got a pretty good part. But I don't think he is, we, I don't think we can trust him for a, uh, a sequel. He just isn't ready yet. All right, black cap with your fist in the air. Were you in the 1968 Olympics? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Blood Hook, we were only uh, the um, executive producers. We put a little money uh, invested in it. And let me say about Blood Hook that the guy who wrote and directed that, uh, his next uh, creation was uh, Mystery Science Theater 2001. <laughs> Sorry, can you say, say it again? No, Bloodhook is still in the Troma uh, uh, library. I don't know that, I'm quite certain if you ask Cousin Ron, who's sitting at the table, I, I know it's uh, either a, a double disc DVD, or, ask him about it, because it's a great movie, you're right. 
And I think that the, the gyno in that movie was, uh, one of the gynos in that movie was murdered, or allegedly murdered by uh, Robert Forster. Who was the, the guy, the actor who got acquitted for murdering his wife? Robert Blake, Blake. Uh, I, they, I believe she was uh, the one, uh, one, one of the ac actors in that movie was allegedly murdered by Robert Blake. Yeah. <laughs> Robert Blake was innocent, just like <laughs> The guy who played the mayor of, of Tromaville in Toxic Avenger? No, he, uh, Patrick Ryan was his name. Uh, he is, uh, made a noise like a frog. <laughs> he croaked. That wasn't long, let's do one more. Yep, All right, one, one more question. Right here, it's the gal with the in your hair. Thank you. They're on down, In the Toxic Avenger, I think if there were police, yes, we did use real policemen in Jersey City. Uh, not the main actor, not not the main top cop, not the police chief. Um, uh, he was from the Bad Actors Union, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, indeed, uh, the uh, the subsidiary policemen were uh, genuine Jersey City policemen. Most of uh, Tromerville, uh, well, the Tromerville where Toxie jumps out the window and dives into a, talk, a vat of chemical toxic waste, that was Booton, New Jersey, uh, which um, was all the citizens came out and uh, they really enjoyed uh, that day. Uh, but most of Toxie, for one, was in Jersey City, right? I then you were inspired by the smell. No. <laughs> Our, our movies, uh, our crew smell a lot worse than the Jersey City. In fact, I do too after a good Mexican meal. But um, what's interesting is Jersey is for trauma is kind of famous for many things. But one of the things is the movies I write and direct uh, promote the underdog. Toxie's the super underdog, but Jersey itself is an underdog. And, and uh, in Troma's War, the good citizens of Tromaville, you know, there's a Troma universe, but it's all about the underdog. And that's why I like, I, I, I live in Manhattan, I was born in Manhattan. It's a very arrogant and uh, cement-filled place. And uh, I always liked New Jersey uh, because it was living in the shadow of this arrogant place. And the, and the Toxic Adventure musical um, uh, really plays off on that. It's really uh, very clever. And uh, so that really, I have a great fondness for the underdog. All right, so let's take a quick break, and then Lloyd will introduce Hannibal the Musical. Oh, very cool. I'm sorry, if you have any stuff here, I'm happy to sign it for free. Unlike those other people you think I heard, I'll be charged for that. My autograph is totally worthless. Uh -huh.